All in the Family was developed by Norman Lear and Bud Yorkin in the late 1960s, and the show wonderfully starred Carol O'Connor as the very opinionated Archie Bunker. What the hell? He said it was in his contract. And Gene Stapleton as his long-suffering but loyal wife, Edith. It was a freak accident! The show not only ran for eight seasons, but it achieved record-breaking success. But when the show was rebranded as Archie Bunker's Place, everyone's favorite aloof housewife, Edith, only survived for a few episodes of the first season. Welcome to Do You Remember? I'm your host, Nostalgic Nick, and today we're checking out Edith Bunker, one of TV's most beloved characters, and how she took some of the hard edges off her bigoted husband. And that should prove to you once and for all that I ain't prejudiced. Her character became a role model for modern housewives. So why in the heck didn't she continue with the new show? Let's spend the afternoon with Edith Bunker and we'll find out. What happened with Jean Stapleton when she left the show? If you enjoy our deep dive, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you never miss some nostalgic content. But without further ado, come on, we gotta catch that subway to 1970s Queens. Moving into 704 Hauser Street. All in the Family was the story of a working class man and his family experiencing changing times in 1970s New York. Archie hysterically belittled his wife Edith and his daughter Gloria, and he constantly referred to his son-in-law Michael as Meathead. And you Polacks are Meatheads. <laughs> Archie also frequently butted heads with his African-American next-door neighbor George Jefferson and a melting pot of ethnic minorities. The show came about when CBS was interested in buying the U.S. rights to the British show Till Death Us Do Part, with the plans that it was going to be a starring vehicle for Jackie Gleason. But producer Norman Lear bought the rights and offered the show to ABC instead. The great Mickey Rooney was actually Norman's first choice for Archie, but Rooney passed on it because he felt the character was un-American. As Lear described the character, Rooney interrupted him to say, quote, Norm, they're going to kill you, shoot you dead in the streets. The executives at ABC also considered Tom Bosley and Jack Warden for Archie, before casting the one and only Carol O'Connor in the title role. Norman already had Gene Stapleton in mind for the part of Edith after he saw her in the Broadway musical Damn Yankees. Lear shot two pilot episodes for ABC starring O'Connor and Stapleton, but the network executives didn't pick the show up. ABC was very hesitant to take a chance on a show with a foul-mouthed, bigoted lead. Who cares? And that was very lucky for CBS indeed. One door closes and another one opens. After ABC declined to pick up the show, CBS bought the rights. The network was well-known and well-loved for rural shows like The Beverly Hillbillies, Green Acres, and Petticoat Junction, and they so badly wished to replace them with more contemporary, urban-themed shows. So this new program was retitled All in the Family, and it made history as the first sitcom shot on videotape. Breaking New Ground the hard-headed Archie Bunker represented America's greatest generation, and he frequently squared off with his baby boomer daughter, played by Sally Struthers, and her husband Mike, played by Rob Reiner. Archie was never at a loss for words about his feelings on hippies, minorities, and gays. No, that's a lie! And that turned Edith into the only voice of reason on the show. The Vietnam War was already well underway when the show began airing, and the women's liberation movement was building up steam. The program's controversial topics were previously considered too racy for broadcast, but All in the Family said, I don't care, and presented them to a nationwide audience in prime time. Episodes of the show's first season were broadcast as reruns, and it officially became the most watched show in the U.S. during the summer of 71. And All in the Family ranked number one in the yearly Nielsen ratings for an unprecedented five seasons. Creating Edith Bunker Edith Bunker was a simple-minded but optimistic character. She stood by Archie despite being constantly belittled and being called a dingbat. She was also often the only character who could get through her husband's gruff exterior and force him to listen to reason. Always listen to me or I'll have to explain it to you all over again. 
Stapleton. Say hi. Before the show, Jean Stapleton had worked a lot on Broadway. She played Sister Miller in the film adaptation of Damn Yankees and reprised the role on Broadway. And because of that damn performance, Norman Lear offered her this breakout role. Despite being a trained singer, she famously made the paint peel off viewers' walls singing the show's opening theme song. She also changed her accent and character between the first two seasons. The shrill, high-pitched voice and nasal accent became more pronounced during the show's second season, and her character became more subservient and stopped making comments under her breath. And that turned out to be a winning formula. Many of the show's most popular episodes focused on her character, and this connected with so many long-suffering Ediths all around the country. What illness did Edith Bunker have? Edith's health issues were the subject of several episodes, and the show was one of the first to openly discuss many women's health issues. The episode Edith's Problem in Season 2 featured an unusually irritable Edith struggling with the effects of menopause. Archie became frustrated when he learned she couldn't go through her change of life quickly enough. And if you want to make a phone call, you make it yourself! <laughs> then Season 4 brought Edith's Christmas Story, which brought up the subject of breast cancer when Edith tells Gloria that she found a lump. I got a lump in my breast. What did you just say? And her tragic death was unknowingly foreshadowed in All in the Family's final episode, Too Good Edith. She had been suffering from the inflammatory condition phlebitis and kept it from Archie. She becomes seriously ill while preparing a big Irish dinner for a St. Patrick's Day party at the bar. And Archie scolds her for not telling him. Why did they get rid of Edith? The role of Edith Bunker earned Jean Stapleton three Emmy Awards and two Golden Globes. But she was growing tired of the part and was concerned about being typecasted. In the middle of the ninth season of All in the Family, Jean Stapleton announced that she didn't want to renew her contract at the end of the season. Archie Bunker's place would take place at Archie's bar and focus on the bar's employees and regular patrons. Jean Stapleton agreed to make guest appearances, but she wouldn't be a regular cast member. And after appearing in five episodes of Archie Bunker's place, she still wasn't very happy. She approached Norman Lear and had the difficult conversation that her character should be killed off. She told him Edith was just a fictional character, and Lear replied, quote, To me, she isn't. But he agreed to her request, and the writers got to work. Archie alone. Edith's character dies in her sleep of a stroke off screen between seasons one and two of Archie Bunker's Place. In the one hour season two premiere, Archie alone. Archie is still in denial weeks later, and his neighbors and friends remove all of her personal items to help him cope, but they leave one pink slipper behind. You had no right to leave me that way. And Archie breaks down in tears when he finds it underneath the bed. The show's legacy. All in the Family was the first sitcom to garner primetime Emmys for all of its lead actors, and it broke a lot of new ground for the type of content that would be subsequently aired on primetime. It was also the first broadcast sitcom to be shot entirely on videotape, a format adopted for numerous reasons. The show also led to more spin-offs than almost any other TV program in history. Those include Archie Bunker's Place, 704 Hauser, and Gloria. Good Times was a spin-off of Maud, and The Jeffersons spun off of Checking In. The Jeffersons became one of the most successful spin-offs in history, and it ran for 11 seasons. Reruns of the show began airing in the 1980s, and they can still be seen today. But out of all of those successful Lear vehicles, All in the Family was probably the most important, with the biggest cultural impact. Former President Richard Nixon even discussed it in his Watergate tapes and it was honored with a 33-cent stamp by the U.S. Postal Service in 1998. And how many of you have been to the Smithsonian to see Archie and Edith's chairs? Yeah, All in the Family was that important. What happened to Edith? Edith Bunker didn't die in vain. After she left the show, Norman Lear created the Edith Bunker Memorial Fund and contributed 500000 to support the ratification of the Equal Rights Amendment. 
it was the very first time that a fund was created to honor a fictional character. But Edith Bunker had become an icon for feminism and a hero to the modern housewife. Jean Stapleton continued to work on TV shows and films until retiring from acting in 2001. And in 2013, the great Jean Stapleton, the loveliest dingbat in history, died from natural causes at the age of 90. Edith Bunker was one of the most beloved characters in TV history, even though Jean Stapleton once decided it was time to move on. And what do you think? Do you think she was right saying the character had run its course? Or could Edith Bunker have lived on? Archie Bunker's place ran for four more seasons and kept earning high ratings. But do you think the show suffered without her? Or was Jean Stapleton correct? Please get in the comments and let us know. And while you're at it, hit that thumbs up icon if you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you for watching.